Welcome to the second Manhattan tutorial. Now that you're familiar with the basics of tracker notation from tutorial 1, we will start to add more dynamic behavior to our music using code and formulas. Formulas work like they do in spreadsheets. Each cell contains simple expressions that define what the data should be. They have a variety of uses, from simple ad hoc events and editing automation, to more complex applications in generative music, such as minimalism, process-based music, or algorithmic composition. Each of the properties of a cell can have its own formula, pitch, volume, instrument, depth, effect. To edit the formula, move the cursor to the cell and press equals. After editing, pressing enter will close the editor and return you to the pattern. The formula will also be executed unless alt is held. Alternatively, press escape to cancel the edit. The execution of a cell's formula is triggered when the cell is played. Thus, as playback loops over the pattern, formulas can be used to evolve the music. In this first step, we will explore some basic formula examples. In the previous tutorial, we simply type data directly into the cell. Here I'll enter 32 for volume. But we can also calculate such data using formulas. If I move to this data and press the equals key, I have the opportunity to enter a formula to define what this cell should be and I can use any mathematical expression. A simple example, 1 plus 2, is evaluated automatically by the computer, and the result 3 becomes the data for the cell. Note in this example that we don't have a note in the cell, so the data is not doing anything. While this example may seem trivial, it can sometimes be useful to get the computer to work things out that you would otherwise have to do in your head. However, the power of code is not that it produces the same result every time, but that it can produce a different result at different times, given the context. If we now return to the formula that we just entered, we can replace it with a formula that takes the current value and changes it. We can read the current volume of the current cell by entering dot volume. And then we can add one to this value, the result of which will be put in to the volume setting. Notice how we've gone from 13 to 14. This will happen every time that cell is played. See how the value counts up one every time. We will use this concept in future tutorials to create counters that track our position in a piece. We will now move to step two of the tutorial and apply a similar process to a piece of music. Formulas can be used to create or change any aspect of the music. It can be especially powerful when combined with pattern effects, the last column of each channel. This is represented by the dot and the two zero blobs. If you move to this column and press Command H, you get a list of the various pattern effects that are available in the program. These are effects that change the note behavior or pattern behavior over time. They can include repeats, vibratos, dynamic slides, pitch slides, and other effects that allow you to add expression to your music. Press Escape to exit the list. Unmute channels 2 to 5 to reveal a potentially familiar piece of music. Press Alt Space to play. This is Zorba's Dance, from the 1964 film Zorba the Greek. It is modelled on a traditional Greek dance that starts slow and gradually gets faster. We will use formulas to accelerate the piece each time it repeats. To begin with, we need to enter a tempo mark, which we do using the pattern effect column. Move to the top of the cell, and as the pattern effect type, enter at. This is the tempo mark. and specifies that the pattern should play at a specific speed, which is dictated by the two parameter digits that follow the at command. Note these digits are written in hexadecimal, which uses base 16, instead of decimal, which is base 10. In decimal, two digits only give us the ability to count up to 99, whereas in hexadecimal, two digits give us the ability to count up to 255, and so we can express more with fewer digits and be more concise in the pattern. We'll start by entering a low tempo, 2-0, which is two lots of 16, giving us a 32 beats per minute tempo. We then go back up to the parameter, enter the equals key 
to define a formula for the tempo effect. Like before, we take the existing value, dot param, and we will go up 10 beats per minute each time it repeats. Press enter to commit. Notice that it's already gone up 10. In hexadecimal, this has gone from 2,0 to 2a. Because there are not enough numerals to represent the digits of hexadecimal, base 16, we use the first few letters of the alphabet, a, b, c, d, e, f, as well as 0 to 9. Therefore, a is the equivalent of 10. You'll get used to this with a bit of practice, but actually with music, base 16 makes a lot more sense than base 10 because it can be divided in half, into quarters, and into eighths, like many quantities in music itself. Now when we play the pattern, it will get faster by 10 beats per minute every time it loops back to the start. and so on. To try different values, we can always reset the current value by simply editing it directly. Here we can go back to the start. Or we can go much faster. This little fragment of music makes use of some other pattern effects, such as the SD command. The SD command is a note delay, we can delay a cell so it is triggered between the rows to give us very fine control of time. In this example, we use the SD1, 2, and 3 to achieve a strumming effect, as well as to achieve the little flourish at the end of the bar. Now move to step 3 to look at another simple application of formulas. In addition to the basic mathematics operations such as plus, minus, times, and divide, formulas support a number of functions which can be used to modify or generate values. These include traditional maths functions like absolute value, ABS, modulo, MOD, and trigonometry, sin, cos, and tan, and also special functions like random number generators, RND. Randomization is a powerful tool in generating dynamic behavior and giving your music a life of its own, whether in subtle or controlled ways, or in a more experimental fashion, as in aleatoric music. We will use the random function to humanize a drum part which is provided in channel 6. Move to this channel and unmute it. The drum part is a tambourine rhythm with variation in volume and some syncopation using the SD1 command, but it sounds very mechanical. The computer never makes a mistake, so its timing is too perfect. We will use a random function to partially randomize both the volume and timing settings of this part. Start by moving to the first volume entry in the channel, and pressing the equals key to define a formula for the volume. Rather than the manually entered 64, we will use the random function rnd to select from a range of numbers between a lower bound, for example 48, and an upper bound, 64. This ensures that the note is loud, with 64 being the maximum volume, but that there is a degree of randomness that's being introduced to make it sound more human. When we press enter, the formula is executed and it's given us 53 as the volume entry. Every time this cell is played, we will get a new volume entry within that range. We will repeat this process for all the volume entries in the first beat of the bar. In the second row, the volume is slightly lower, so we'll have a slightly lower range, 32 to 48. Is lower again in the third row, 16 to 32. And the fourth is the same as the second row, so let's do another 32 to 48. Notice that we still have the general dynamics contour, but there's some variation within it. Next, we'll take a similar approach to randomizing the delay effect. These are the SD1 commands in the second and fourth row. Move to the D1 parameter of the first instance. 
and press equals to specify a formula for it. The current parameter is d1 for a delay of one tick. We want to randomize it, perhaps between no delay and two ticks of delay, d0 and d2. However, as previously mentioned, the parameters for effects are in hex, so we need to tell Manhattan that these values are hex values, which we do by putting an h on the end of each value. The second and fourth row are more or less the same, so I'm simply going to copy the second row and then overwrite the fourth. To do this, I pressed Alt-Command-V to paste the cell in place without moving the rest of the note data. This first beat is now sufficiently randomized, so we will select it and copy it to the rest of the channel so that the whole channel is randomized. This is the same copy and pasting process that we saw in the first tutorial. Let's reset the tempo and listen to the piece. It sounds a little more natural now, replicating the errors and nuances that humans add to a musical performance. This concludes the second tutorial and our basic introduction to code expressions and simple formulas. Move to the third tutorial to find out a bit more about using the data in the pattern and addressing other cells.